years ago. It was just me talking to her on the phone. I had first heard about her. I had taken a writing workshop and a speaker at the time was talking about tritype. Gave me her name and I went, oh, I gotta find out more. So I um, studied the Enneagram for, gosh, years and years. And I thought my son was an eight. And then when she said she was an eight, I went, oh, well maybe you can give me advice about my child and see who it felt like to us is just on purpose being a pain. Uh, <laughs> so, and then, you know, talking to Catherine about how to talk to an eight, especially an eight child and an eight child development, it was so different than anything my husband and I had never experienced. Um, and then talking to his school and the teachers, we realized that it was different for them too. It was this battle, why, why is this kid so combative? <laughs> and, and of course, you know, he, he's been like that since before he was born. <laughs> Um, and even as a little tiny baby, he was like that. Um, and you know, most of the parenting books say to set limits, to be firm, to do this, this, and that. None of that worked with Kai. None of it. On top of that, he's uh, profoundly gifted, so that's adding into it. Well, we didn't know that at the time either. We were stressed out. We, yeah, it was just really hard on us. We didn't know why he was so tough to deal with. and compared to our friends who were raising nines and sixes, we had it so easy, or twos. <laughs> what I wouldn't have given for, you know, most of the men in my family are fives, so like, God, I love to raise a five, I know how to do that. What was interesting, because Kai was at six, six at the time, and Catherine said, well, you have to negotiate with him. But that goes against everything you're taught as a parent. You don't, you don't, that, that's, most experts would say your child's manipulating your negotiating. But you know, it's not like that. You have to negotiate with them and hold them to his deal, and he'll keep his deal. Like, huh. So I tried it, and it worked so well, and he was totally compliant. It was like pushing on a wall, and then all of a sudden it giving way. I could not believe it. <laughs> so, you know, the thing that just the language that she taught us to use with Kai was so valuable in stopping this power struggle that we didn't even, because the parenting books pretty much teach you to power struggle and that they'll give in. But I think that works to stick with it. <laughs> Never once an eight. And so when we figured out we don't need to do that um, and he calmed down and we calmed down, we we're just able to see more of the strengths and gifts of having an eight child. Like he's tough, he's self-directed. I mean, right now he's upstairs um, doing an exam. He's in online high school. He's so self-motivated, so on top of things. And you know, with these primarily gifted kids, they tend not to have developed executive function. But because he's an eight, he's like, and that's all eight. Um, so we're really getting to appreciate and enjoy his eightness and when oh god I don't think we would have ever understood it without Catherine. Catherine actually so Kai you know, we had the gift of this plus the eightness. We got misunderstood a lot in the school he was in. At one point Catherine started teaching Kai micro expressions so he could figure out what was going on with his classmates because they kept thinking that he was being mean because he was teasing and giving nicknames and and really that's an eight showing affection, but the other kids didn't get it. <laughs> um, and then the school principal was starting to come down on him. Um, the principal was a nine. Um, and then the school was nice enough to say, because I was telling them, you know, we're working with this Enneagram expert that's been so helpful. Would you be willing to sit in on a session with her? We'll pay for it. And so she sat in with the principal, the school counselor, and a couple of Kai's, Kai's French teacher, English teacher. Um, he's at a French, he was at a French immersion school. And she took the lay of the land there and told us, pull him out, Let's get him out now. <laughs> and we were, we were sitting there going, oh. Um, and then a few weeks later, we pulled him out because if, we didn't pull him out just because she said so. We, we started looking at, is this really accurate? And, her assessment of everyone was, 
Um, so we ended up pulling him out. Um, and then Kai started working with her once a week. So they get on Zoom together. And they've been doing that for over a year, maybe a year and a half. And so she goes over uh, Enneagram, microexpressions, they talk politics. And she teaches him about power and the eight to help him be a more uh, successful eight. <laughs> So it's, it's just been it's been wonderful in that way because we've seen this tremendous growth in his empathy. Um, I mean, it's always been there, but for eight, it's kind of hard to get them to be willing to be a little vulnerable. But just all the personal work that he that she's done with him one on one, it's just been so so life changing for him. Um, and I don't know. I we want to keep going. <laughs> we don't want him to stop because he talks to her. It's good for him to have another eight to talk to because we don't know any. She has been such a resource for him and a mentor. And um, because she's an eight and he's also an eight, it's, it's, it's just really nice for him to be able to talk to a healthy eight um, who knows where he needs to grow. Um, and what's important to him, and what language to use with him. Um, and he's just, I feel like in the last year and a half, he's become more and more comfortable with himself, uh, less defensive since he had such a traumatic school experience, um, that less and less of that's coming back to haunt him. Uh, and, and the nice thing about their relationship is she's teaching him about all the different types how hierarchy and power structure works in the world, which is important to me, um, and how he can feel more in control of himself. And I really feel like without Catherine, um, my son wouldn't be doing well at all. It's been a blessing. I don't know what we would have done without it.